Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how we made these, if the camera will focus, <laughs> let's get this flipped around real quick, these fused glass cabochons. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this project I am going to attempt to salvage some of our um, dud cabs like things that we tried to fire and it didn't quite work out right normally we would have just like smashed these up and used them for in a melt pot but if you can kind of see we were using a glue to glue the tiles together before fusing them and it left a residue so um this was in one of our very first fuse batches so um i didn't want to just smash that up and have that be inside um, you know, inside our glass melts and stuff, like our sheet melts. So I also didn't want to waste the glass. So I'm just coming through here and you can see we had uh, like a whole batch, <laughs> like we had done a whole kiln load. <clears throat> and also I was using kiln wash at the time. And, uh, even though we sanded it, there was still quite a bit of that kiln wash embedded into the back. So uh, I didn't want that transferred through in frit form or in a sheet melt either. So I'm just coming through and stacking all these pieces kind of close together. And I'm going to experiment with remelting them down into a sheet. And to take care of the problem of the um, scuzziness. I have, this is a violet opalescent, really pretty purple, but not see-through. So it's an opaque glass. And I'm going to try to cover up the messy bits with that. <clears throat> and this is just going to be the first of what is likely to be many firings of this sheet to try to just get it to evolve into something usable. So I'm going to throw it into hyperlapse. So, um, the video isn't like really really long uh and i'll meet you guys in the next step So I have the bulk of our frit down and some of the pieces have been strategically placed to try to cover up or distract from the scuzzy parts, but for the most part, it's just a haphazardous mess of just, well, maybe this will look cool. <laughs> and now I'm coming through with some homemade frit. This is made from chunking up studio nuggets by we instead of using a frit piston which we found leaves a whole lot even through magnetically cleaning leaves a whole lot of like metal left in the frit um sometimes embedded into it to where oops to where the um you know a magnet just can't get it out we'd have to grind it out so what we do is we heat up our studio nuggets in just our regular kitchen oven to about 500 degrees and then we shock it into cool water and that makes it very easy to break with just like a 10 pound mallet we wrap it up in denim smash it like one hit and it's you know fritted so there's some residue of like denim fibers in here but they have run away pretty cleanly so i'm just coming through and to get some cool, hopefully, wispy effects. I'm just layering this glass in here. 
Now, I don't want to layer so much that we're going to risk our plate running over the edge of our paper. But I'm hoping that they're uh, over our uh, kiln paper, is what I mean by that. Um, so... I don't want to mount it up too high, but there's enough gaps and things in here that I do think this is going to be okay. And if not, then we will have all learned a very tragic lesson from my mistake. So um, I'd rather <clears throat> I'd rather me mess up and y'all learn from that than y'all mess up. So because um, this could be a very expensive mess up. Uh, in a perfect world, I would have some fire dams up that can actually lift our kiln paper and I may actually prop up our kiln paper um, with these kiln shelves and this should help us to avoid hopefully um, a very bad mess later on <laughs> so I'm still not gonna overfill it but um, I would hate for um, my glass to leak out and get all over the kiln shelf and get all over the kiln bed and just just it just a mess <laughs> so um this being done i think we're gonna go ahead and run the kiln and um i'll have the i'll have my firing schedule down in the video description below um, for each round if it's different. I typically fire just at the same rate every time uh, just because I as easy as it is to reprogram my kiln eh, I just don't feel like it. So um, we just go with what works so far and this has worked so far. So let's get this fired up and see how that goes. Before running the kiln I have decided to add some medium pale purple for it. Um, and I am just going to sprinkle this in. Like so. A better teacher would have actually measured out how much we used, but here we are. Um, I like to bring up the edge and kind of flick it a bit, but actually I find whoop, gets all the little loose little bits to kind of tap back in and condense together. Cool. So now let's see how this comes out. seems to have worked you guys so this is the base layer of the frit getting melted together I think I probably could have done with less clear but not bad for a base layer I can work with this I think so I've cut this piece up into uh, smaller chunks and then what I'll do is clean the pieces with just Windex. Um, and then I'm going to stack this together and put more like purple frit and different things on top of it, especially over here where we have a little bit overlapping. I could cut it down to size, but I really like this effect. Um, and then after baking, and I bake this uh, full fuse schedule on some kiln paper. Um, and this is how that comes out. It's a little scuzzy. It needs cleaned with the Windex. But what I'm going to be doing, like, because it's been laying and getting just a couple days worth of dust on it. Um, what I'm going to be doing with this from here, so that's one example. And you can see how the smaller frit along the edges got some really nice patterning. So I really feel like I could have done with sprinkling a lot more small frit in layers through this. So let's set that off to the side. And here on my cutting mat, uh, I wanted to show you this one as well because this came out really cool. I'm not entirely certain why it has these 
lines but I can deal really like the way that looks though and I'm not worrying about any of the detrification or anything until our final baking so I'm just going to lay this in and to do the cuts coming through with my cutter I don't have any cutting oil currently um, this is just my life right now <laughs> so I have it set up um, and I'm gonna come through and just with a heavy-duty scorer do a nice deep cut or deep line and then these are my heavy-duty running pliers that if I make it too narrow to where, like if I make my strip too narrow to where I can't get a nice full contact on both sides, then I don't get a clean cut. But typically, and I hate to jinx it, but if I get it in deep enough um, to where I can make good contact, then it still does that. Definitely wear your safety glasses. Definitely wear an apron. This is no joke. Um... And I really do think having a bandsaw would work significantly better. But like you can see, that's some really nice cells and things going on there too. Um, maybe this side will work a little better. Nope. <laughs> so you can see though, that is some a dummy thick glass. Like super thick. <sighs> so I'm going to see if I can't get maybe better results another day how does chunking this because i may end up just saving that for um when one day when we have our bandsaw Woo, yeah chunking it with the tile nippers works perfectly fine Woo. there we go So then what I'm going to be doing with each of these pieces, which this isn't going to have as much quite depth and stuff as, you know, from the center of the, the piece, like these pieces in here are what I really am looking forward to seeing, um, but I can't get to them right now. So what I'm going to do is this is some double thick, is that, no, this is just the three millimeter clear. I'm going to snip off a piece of that. And I like to cut this stuff very irregularly because you can see these are very irregular. So I don't necessarily need like perfect squares. But I'm just going to cap it with clear and then I'm going to run this through my kiln at a full fuse schedule as well. Also, if I had some dichro uh, on clear or even dichro on black, I, would, I could use this to cap off the dichro depending. Um, or I could use, this could be the dichro piece and set it on there for, so that would be a really great use of some of the maybe blander pieces, um, of glass. Also on any little bits that are just, uh, I don't think you're going to melt down well, we could either grind them to get rid of the very sharp points, that way it'll puddle out nicely, or we could take these and stack them into a mold and use them as very chunky for it and fill it in with other frit colors and stuff and kind of just melt it down from there. Ooh, look at these purple ones. Oh. These are the ones that were smashed? Yes, these are the ones that you smashed. And I put just a bit of clear on top of them to help it like puddle out and stretch a little bit more. Okay. I really like them. They, they came out great. The only one that I'm worried about is like that one on the tip of it. You see what I mean? Yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I do hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. If you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in our monthly craft-along kits, our exclusive coupons, behind-the-scenes stuff, Saturday exclusive streams, just all sorts of stuff, uh, please consider joining our craft-along club. Uh, Links are down in the video description to all that. And it starts at just a dollar a month or $12 a year. And that goes a long way in helping Randy and I to keep our heads above the water and just keep doing what we're doing. So um, 
Check out our website, factworthcreations.com. We're constantly posting new things for sale as well as keeping our uh, calendar of events up to date. Sorry, all the critters are just milling about today. <laughs> um, and I think that's everything. So yeah, check out all the links down in the video description and we will see y'all in our next video. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>